So welcome to the brand new Ford Mustang. You might have noticed that I'm sitting on the right hand side because for the first time, Ford have decided to give us that option. I suppose people will be approaching this car from two different directions. Some will be wondering if simply putting the wheel on the right hand side and updating the suspension is enough to stop it from being a little bit rubbish on British roads. Others, however, will be pondering if Ford has gone too European and removed a detrimental amount of the Stang's American appeal. So we're going to find out. There are three main reasons, obviously, for buying a Mustang. One is the price. So this is just under £34,000 as standard, and even this fully spec version is just over 36. You get things like climate control seats and things like that. Extraordinary for the money. The two other things, well, the way it looks, which I think looks absolutely brilliant, this car. From the outside, it looks much smaller, looks more sort of, I suppose, in keeping with our roads, and it's just, it's sharp. I love the creases along the bonnet and up at the hips. The third reason is what's under the bonnet. The five litre quad cam 32 valve V8 is putting out 410 brake horsepower, 391 pounds for the torque, and sounds glorious. And it adds real character to the car. It's, it's a major reason for buying it. Although perhaps it's not the sharpest thing in terms of throttle response, it's deceptively quick. Not 60 miles an hour is, well, it's about 4.8 seconds they're claiming, which puts them on par with, well, it's with the Jaguar F Type Coupes, the V6 variety, and also a sort of a Porsche Cayman S, I suppose. The six speed manual gearbox is, well, it's much better than before, to be honest. It's much tighter, it's a bit notchy, so you can't really rush the shift through. You initially feel you might be able to, but it makes stirring the engine much more enjoyable than it has been in the past. I suppose we always knew that the bravado of its styling and that big V8 were going to be seductive, but what about the handling? Of course, this is the first Mustang in 50 years to have independent rear suspension. Can't rush these things. But what difference has that made? A bit of wallow, no matter what steering mode you have it on, there's a bit of sort of guesswork going on there. But it's really good fun. The brakes are really strong. You pitch it in, you can use the throttle through the corner. It's a very honest car. I really, really rather like it. <laughs> you've got three different steering modes. So you've got normal, then you've got Sport Plus, and you've got Comfort. To be honest, not a huge amount of difference, although I think the Sport does ju just a little bit more weight, so it's, it's nice to have. You've also got four driving modes. So you've got normal, again, Sport Plus, again. Uh, then you've got track, which is obviously supposedly only used for track, and gives you a sign of a, a helmet, sort of stink-like helmet. And then you've got a uh, wet weather mode as well. Fundamentally, the car doesn't feel wildly different in any of the modes. Pitch it into a corner and understeer initially builds surprisingly quickly, but it's easily reined in and this is merely the invitation to use the throttle as more of a steering device, which is fun. Sadly, the body control still leaves something to be desired and the lack of steering feel can leave you guessing at times. But the Mustang is pleasingly willing and the balance is as intuitively entertaining as a front-engine rear driver should be. So what are our conclusions about the Mustang then? Well, I think you'll be reassured to hear that it is still very much the Mustang that we've had before, just with well, a little bit more ease of use from it being right-hand drive, which does make it easier. It makes it easier to place, despite the fact it's still a huge car. It's it sort of a bigger, more imposing proposition than anything you might find from Porsche or, or Jaguar to that extent. But it's a very characterful car, and although dynamically it's still a bit, a bit woolly, it's good fun at same speeds as well. That V8 just creates theatre. And I like it to that extent. Objectively, no, it can't keep up with the best European stuff. But subjectively, it's an awful lot of fun, this car. So that's a brief taste of what we think of this car. I'm sure we'll get it back at some point and go and do some big skids on the track or something like that, make proper use of that limited slip diff. There's so much else to talk about. I mean, is it, is it worth sort of the same money as a hot hash? Does that make it a really appealing alternative to that? Or would you rather spend the money on something secondhand like an E90 M3? Let us know in the comments box below. To see how the last generation Mustang got on in a drag race against a C63 AMG, click on the left. And to see how Ford's Fiesta WRC car got on in our gravel group test, click on the right. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.